Welcome. Both NASA and NOAA have reported that 2018 is the fourth hottest year on record. This video is a summary of how they came to that conclusion. Here are the significant climate events in 2018. You will notice that most areas had some form of record high temperatures, particularly Australia and New Zealand. Note there are no record low temperatures noted anywhere here. We had two wet areas. Hawaii had 49 inches of rain in 24 hours. That's quite amazing. And the US overall had its third wettest year on record. The Arctic sea ice extent was the second smallest during its growth season and the sixth smallest during its melt season. In the Antarctic, it had its fourth smallest annual uh, maximum extent during its growth season and during its melt season, it was the second smallest extent. As far as tropical storms are concerned, the Eastern Pacific, the Atlantic, the North Indian and the Western Pacific all had seasons that were much above normal. Meanwhile, the Southern Indian Ocean and the Southwest Pacific had uh, seasons that were below normal. Overall, land, sea, the Northern and Southern Hemisphere were all ranked the fourth warmest on record and that summed to make the year the fourth warmest on record. The last five years have all been record setting. As you can see from this table, 2014 through 2018 are all in the top five warmest years on record. My prediction is that 2019 will make it six of six. Let's take a look at a map of where the temperatures were most extreme. This is a percentiles map, which shows the areas of record warm and record cold. Record cold would be indicated by a dark blue pixel and there are none of those in this picture. Record warm or record hottest would be represented by deep red and there are 83 such pixels in this picture. So this indicates we still have a strongly warming world. Let's take a look at global precipitation. There was one area that had particularly large amounts of rain. That was the eastern states of the United States and my state was one of them because we set an all time record in 2018. However, there are several areas that seem to be much drier than normal. The Western United States, Europe, Southern India and Southern Africa. The Earth has warmed by about one degree centigrade in the last 70 years. This is a plot of the annual temperature anomaly. And if you fit a straight line to it, you can see the slope over that period is 0.14 degrees centigrade per decade. However, this number is affected by where you start and where you end. And particularly that's the case because of the influence of El Nino and La Nina. There's a way of getting around that and seeing what the actual slope is. Here are the same temperatures from 1980 onwards, marked with different colors depending on what part of the Enso cycle we're in. Gray is Enso neutral, red is El Ninos and blue is La Ninas. So let's just take the times for when there was Enso neutral conditions and mark the points. We can fit a straight line to those points and get something like this. So that's the black line there is the best fit to those particular data. Here's the same plot again, but now I've marked with red dots the peaks of the El Ninos and we'll fit a straight line to that, which I'm showing in red here. And so we now have an equivalent line to the one that we got for the Enso neutral times. Now we'll do exactly the same thing again, but this time for the La Niñas marked in blue and we'll fit a line to those points. So now let's compare those three lines and see what they look like. Here's the El Niños. Here's the La Niñas and here are the Enso Neutral. And strangely enough, all three of those curves are identical. They all have a trend of 0.2 degrees centigrade per decade. So providing you don't start and stop in the middle of either one type of ENSO phase and end in a different one, you get basically the same rate of warming all the time, which is 0.2 degrees centigrade per decade. Let's take a look at Arctic sea ice extent. On the left here, we have a picture of the sea ice covered in the Arctic Ocean. And the orange line here is where it is normally is at that time, which is in September of 2018. So this is a remarkably large reduction from the average. Now, one thing you should be warned here is where this shows white doesn't mean that there's solid ice there at all. 
all it means is there's at least 15% ice in that pixel. So that's the equivalent of this. If this blue area is open seawater and you have an iceberg of this size in the middle of it, in that picture it will appear solid white. So the ice extent is not quite as good as you think it is. On the right here we have in grey a graph of month by month the average of sea ice extent in the Arctic with the grey area either side of it being the uncertainty on that. In blue here shows what was happening in 2018 and throughout the whole of the year it was but well below that average. Let's compare it with the lowest year on record which is 2012 and you can see that actually for most of the year it was below the level of 2012. It was only just in September uh, at the minimum where 2012 outpaced uh, 2018. Now let's take a look at the Antarctic sea ice extent. On the left we have the ice concentration anomaly rather than just the ice itself. Red means a deficit, blue means a surplus. And you can see there's far more red on this plot than there is blue. On the right here we have what 2018 is compared to the average which is in grey. Now let's take a look at the upper atmosphere for the whole of 2018 and here we're comparing the results from the University of Alabama Huntsville with the remote sensing systems results. For the lower troposphere both ranked it as the sixth warmest year on record with an average warming trend of 0.15 degrees centigrade per decade. Now that's a warming trend. In the mid troposphere they both ranked it as the seventh warmest year on record, with an average warming trend of 0.11 degrees centigrade per decade. When you get up to the stratosphere, there's a cooling trend. UAH ranked it as the fourth coolest year on record, whereas RSS ranked it as the fifth coolest year on record, and they had an average cooling trend of 0.25 degrees centigrade per decade. Now, when you compare that with the surface trend of 0.2 degrees centigrade per decade, here you will notice that closest to the surface is the greatest heating and as you go further up in the atmosphere that heating effect is reduced until you get to the stratosphere where it's cooling. Those of you familiar with my monthly uh, assessments of the climate know that I like to compare the number of record daily highs with the record number of daily lows. And the idea here is that if there's more daily highs uh, than lows then we have a warming planet and vice versa if we have a cooling planet. So how did 2018 fare? As far as record daily highs, we had 91,964. Record daily lows, 41,144. That's a ratio of 2.1 to 1 highs over lows. And that's been what it has been about for the last 10 years or so. So we still have a strongly warming planet. No report would be complete without the summary of the 2018 sunspot record. We had 208 spotless days during the year and an average sunspot number of 7.05 sunspots per day. To determine the date of solar minimum, you take a 13 month running mean. I've done that there shown in black. Now by the fact that it's 13 months uh, means that we're going to be behind six months where we are now. And you can see that the number has in fact been dropping and it looks as though it's still on a curve to continue to drop. So that means we're not yet at solar minimum. Now let's take a look at the magnetic sun and see how it has evolved over the year. The thing to notice here that in the northern hemisphere black polarity leads which is negative polarity. In the southern hemisphere white polarity should lead. That's solar cycle 24. Anything the other way around is a solar cycle 25. See how many of those you can spot during the course of this year. Remember, black leads in the north, white leads in the south. Notice how most of the activity is actually in the Northern Hemisphere.
So how many did you see? I thought I saw three. Now let's take a look at the coronal images for the same time period. Notice how relatively few flares there are, but there's still quite a lot of activity all over the sun. The dark shapes you are seeing flash in front of the image every now and then is when the sun goes into Earth eclipse because the satellite has moved behind the Earth. I never get tired of watching a movie like this. Just so much going on, it always looks so interesting. Let's see if we can draw some conclusions from all of this. 2018 was the fourth warmest year on record and probably in the last 650 years because the Little Ice Age preceded the modern uh, thermometer record. We've had 43 years since the Earth had an average annual temperature anomaly below the 20th century average. The measurements from a number of different sources show that the Earth is still warming, independent of El Nino or La Nina. The sun is relatively quiet, but not quite yet at solar minimum. So until next time, goodbye.